Lovely. Lovely. Cheers. Bye. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. I've got an unconscious gentleman. He has severe traumatic brain injury. King's College Hospital, London. I think something hurt. One of the busiest A&E departments in the country. They'll be busy right now. Yeah, you know, 15 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes. King's is extreme, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> A place where love, life and death... <laughs> unfold every single day. Fall from a tree is probably absolutely trolleyed. I'm very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep thinking I'm not going to cope. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department <gasps> in just one 24-hour period. Kavina. Everyone should walk through an emergency room at least once in their life because it makes you realise what your priorities are. It's not the rush, rush, rush and the money, money, money. It's the people you love and the fact that one minute they might be there and one minute they might be gone. Yeah. Trauma red phone, six minutes. Trauma red phone, six minutes. Stabbing. Yeah. You know, used to be Saturday nights all right for fighting. It's obviously Thursday nights all right for stabbing. It's sad the way things are going. The fact that a lot of people don't have anybody to look after them, to love them. I think that's sad. I think, you know, I think everybody deserves to be looked after and loved. Stabbing. 35-year-old Colin has been stabbed. He has knife wounds in his arms, chest and liver. OK, this is Colin. Hello, mate. He's stabbed with a small knife that's and it. four times. Put your thumb back if you can, uh, don't you? GTS 15-year-old oh, time, moving on four limbs. I have access to oxygen, no other interventions. You and I have to be stable. Take some nice deep breaths, all right? We're going to get you some painkillers shortly. A stab to the liver can be fatal. The team need to assess him as quickly as possible. His 19-year-old girlfriend, Esther, was with him during the attack. His name is Colin. Um, he's our gentleman who's been stabbed. He has got hemopneumothorax and a liver laceration. Yeah. He has got a chest drain in. Cheers, Gordon. Thanks, mate. Bye. for so long, you get me? And not giving me a key, you get me? It's their fault. You get me? They're, they're getting blamed for it. They have to pay me for, for me getting attacked on my property, you get me? We were just asleep in bed. I didn't hear anything until the door was just completely broke open and some just peeked up and some people were standing above his head and my head with a gun with their face masked saying, where's the money and all sorts of crap. I ain't had, had no argument with anybody. I ain't beef with anybody, I ain't trouble with anybody, anything. I ain't done shit. I've been with you most of the time, you get me? 
And it's basically just gave me some miles to rope me, like. So why don't you move somewhere else? Baby, no, I've been trying to move for ages now. I've asked you to get me out of there ages ago, you get me? You know I wanted to move. I live in Brighton. I live with my mum, my two sisters. He's come from London, where loads of crime sort of goes round. So I've sort of seen a different aspect to life now I've met him. He's got a certain aura to him, where it's a bit bad, <laughs> bad, bad man, sort of. <laughs> but that's not what I'm attracted to. The, that's a slight, that's a little part of it. Hey, babe. Colin is in hospital and someone broke into the house and stabbed him. He's got a punctured lung and punctured liver. Uh, they said we'll tie him up and they were going to tie him up. And they kept working around him with the gun and stabbed him five times. If he hadn't jumped out his window, I don't know what would have happened. Girlfriend looks quite alright. I think the girlfriend, girlfriend looks alright. It's got a lot of tattoos and things, so. So what do you mean by that? I've got tattoos as well. Well, no, so have I. <laughs> oh, nice bit of chocolate though. Keep me sweet. I feel sick. Is that make you feel a bit queasy? Don't look at it then. <laughs> joking. Are you joking? We don't, we don't need two casualties. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get a chair. Yeah, really One hour after arriving in Resus, Colin's condition has stabilised. It was the last thing in my whole life of expecting to wake up and find two masked persons in my, in my home. I thought that was the safest place to be. <laughs> Breathing looks fine. Yeah. We met a girl called Faye's house. I didn't completely attract to him that, that time. A few weeks later, I got hold of her number, went for a few drinks, meet up a few times, and ever since we've just been close friends and then we got together. You've got a nice, kind job. Oscar. <laughs> She's well spoken, she's polite. Just, just everything about her is just perfect for me, I believe. That's what attracted me to her. I love how he looks, I love how he dresses, I love how he speaks, I love how he smells, I love how he makes me laugh. I love how he makes me feel like secure, and I love how he makes me sort of have a sense of direction and help me when I'm feeling low. You'll be all fine. You will be fine. Just saying that. No, I know you will. Oh, I'm gonna give you some hug, please. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just felt like he was so, like he just needed hugs and like smiles and just me telling him he was gonna be okay. I just felt like I had to really be there for him when that happened. <laughs> Sorry, is it okay to have another cup of tea? Three weeks, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Been in three weeks What's been happening with you? Uh, I, my memory is just going. Is it? I don't know why. Oh, I know what. Around the 
to tell them I wasn't feeling well, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have this phone that I can ring. Yeah. And they sent an ambulance. They said, oh, they said, wait a moment. They went off. They came back and said, we're sending an ambulance. That was kind of them, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 87-year-old Nancy has been brought in after collapsing at home on her own. All right, my darling. Is that all right? When you see older people when they're on their own and they really haven't got anybody, you do think how hard it must be for them not to have someone who's looking out for them, you know, and we probably are the people that are looking out for them. And, you know, I, I do a job that is very, very stressful and I'm lucky enough to go home and have an amazing life and a beautiful family and a supportive family to be able to come back the next day feeling like I hadn't worked a horrendous shift the day before, you know? It's, it's important to me. I mean, I don't know if I'd be able to do it with such uh, vim and vigour if I didn't have them supporting me, to be honest. Let me have your arm, my love. Oh, and you've had a blood test recently. What was that for? Oh, um, I know, I went on a cruise and I felt sick after it. I had a kind of sick um, feeling. And... Yeah. Uh, Where did you go? We went to Southern Ireland. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. It was very interesting. So, do you live on your own? Yeah, yes, I do. Yeah. I'm just beginning to feel the disadvantage, you know. Yeah. I was all right for quite a long time. I, got, I was used to it. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you're um, happily married and got a family, you know, it must be very, very nice for people. I've always thought that, yes. When I would have been courting, the war was on and all the men were away, so we never got a chance to know them. and. And but by the time they were back, it was probably too late. Okay, let me just have your arm. I'm just going to pop a little line in and take some blood from you. Yeah. Oh, you've got very good veins. I come from a long living family, though. Oh, do you? Yes, and uh, I've never known anybody be in a home. Well, that's brilliant. That's really, really yeah. good. Really, really yeah. good. Oh, yes, I'm very, I get around you as well. And I like living independently. I wouldn't want to go into a home. And kind of have your books and your music and yeah. the things around you. Of course. Yeah. Should I've got too many things around me. <laughs> You're a bit of a hoarder. I think, yeah, that's right. Don't get rid of anything. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she gorgeous? She is gorgeous. I know, she's had hip replacements. She's just been on a cruise. Oh, yeah. Oh, brilliant. And she is 86. I'll be a cantankerous old bitch, I think. of mine. I'm still in here. They said I've got a two and a half hour wait. Yeah, and then my doctor called me back. Um, I'm saying to her, both of my, my ears leaking. She says, what, both of them? I, sh I said, yeah. She said, both? That's very dangerous. And she's saying to me, well, I think I'm going to set you off with antibiotics because um, I think I'm saying, you know, Doctor, to be honest, think isn't good enough. And then I'm saying to the doctor, when I said to the doctor, to be honest, doctor, I don't really, I don't feel comfortable with you saying you think. She's like, well, I'm just trying to do my job. And, um, and when people are being aggressive, something, something, I said, aggressive. I said, I'm not being aggressive. I said, I can be aggressive. I'm not being aggressive. I'm saying I do not. Um, all it is is that I don't think that your ethics of working right now is right. When, when, when people come to the hospital and the doctor say, well, we think it's this and that, and then they go home and then they die the next day, it's because you think. Do you understand? I said, you haven't even asked me to come in. Mum, they're more, mum, they're more than careless. They're even whatless. Do-do-do-do-do. <laughs> 
The results of Colin's scan are back and reveal the extent of his internal injuries. The, I mean, obviously the scan shows that this, this wound here particularly has gone into the liver. Um, I don't think he's caused any major injury in these operations. Okay. But we, we need to keep an eye on you, so I think we'll be in over the weekend. I haven't been in trouble for the last five years or more now. You know, and my my history has nothing to me to be proud of. And I'm really disappointed of of my past, you know, that's why I try and make, you know, the future back. It's made us quite a bit closer. Just because he almost died, I realised when I thought that he was going to die how much I cared for him. did save my life. She actually made a phone call to actually get me to the hospital, you know, and I believe that she played a big part in saving my life. She did save my life, yeah. Yeah, I do love her. A million times I do. She knows that. I tell her that every day. What would you say to people that, that will say to you, you shouldn't be with him, he's bad news? He's not. He's not bad news. He should be being cared for, not being thought of as, you know, some horrible man and horrible villain. Because that wasn't him, was it? That was other people breaking into his house. <laughs> so that's what I'd say to the people, and I say I love him, and that's fair enough for you to say that, but I'm not... I'm staying with him, so if, if you want to sh have a problem with me about that, that's your problem. And then they said they ain't got no appointment, so they do that phone consultation thing. And I'm saying to her, I've got a lump on my neck. She's like, I think, I think. You see, babe, thinking doesn't work for me, because Sandy's ex-boyfriend, yeah, his ex-girlfriend went into hospital with a headache, you know, babe. They sent the girl away. The next day, the girl died. Do you understand? Like, come on, man. These people are slacking. And even my mum said it, because they're not getting paid what they want to get paid, they're just taking a piss. Oh, I'm going to get upset, you know. Oh, this wait is too long now. Oh, I'm in pain, oh, God. <laughs> How do you feel right now? Well, I feel fairly all right, really. I feel better with it. OK. And at home, you're completely independent? Do you have any oh. carers coming to help well, you? Well, I've got uh, someone coming to do my housework. And, OK. Uh, yes. Although she's not been very satisfactory, I'm actually changing it. She's moment. once a week, isn't it? Well, it's twice a week. Twice a week. We've got social workers in the department yeah. who will be able to see whether they can organise some care if yes. you so need it, OK? Yeah. Being on your own at night is probably the most difficult time. There's uh, loneliness, for instance, where you couldn't expect a friend to be coming round. Well, I wouldn't worry somebody in the night. We have... Um some volunteers from the Red Cross Society. Yeah. What they do is they go home um, with people such as yourself, just to make sure you're comfortable at home. Well, when they uh, came to pick me up, they said, oh goodness, you need to uh, tidy your sitting room, need all the books around. <laughs> I've been trying to do it, but it's not easy on your own. No. Yeah, so. No. Don't worry, they'll, they'll, they'll be very helpful. Yes, all right, yes. Okay, yes. okay, yes. thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah.
when you had no experience going to hospitals, you could feel frightened, and the sight of an ambulance used to worry me, but now it's, it's, I'm really grateful and pleased to go there, and that there really is nothing to be afraid of. They really do look after you well. You ready to go? Ready, steady. You just take your time. You're welcome. What would we do without them? I think it's a shame when people don't appreciate what they do. Yes. So you're not coming no more? Oh, do you know, she probably said that because I got seen. You know, I said I wanted you to come in with me. Um, they've given me some stuff here. Yeah? The, man, the man's had a look in my ears. He's saying to me, basically, if I carry on cleaning my ears, I can kill myself. Carry on cleaning my ears, I can kill myself because I'm pushing the infection into my brain, yeah? Yeah, he said, he said my ears are infection, infected and I'm pushing the infection into my brain. Yeah, um, I've got to go and he's booked me into a specialist GP because they said I need to go to get counselling and see a psych psychologist or something. He said, I've got, he said I've got compulsive disorder, something like that. Obsess obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, when it, yeah, yeah, because I do my ears, I clean it too much. Because you see, if I don't have a cotton bud, I get angry. Yeah. Yeah, when I get, when I don't clean my ears, you know how I get, I get funny, you get me? No, uh, bad. Way. Thanks very much. My drink here, you keep leaving. I'm going to look for you. Be good next time. I will. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Get in there. Get in there. Daniel, get in there. Susan's been brought to A&E by her partner Gordon and children Alfie and David. She's been suffering from a pain in the neck. There's two doctors says in the um, ambulance. Eh? It might be, it might be cramp. What? I tell him I said it might be gallstones again. Yeah. So he goes, yeah, she suffers them a lot, don't she? Gallstones. You know what you do? thinking, don't you? What? What? Supposed to be going out tonight. Hello. <coughs> Sit down, kids. My name's Giles. I'm one of the nurses on today. What's brought you into us today? Uh... I'm getting pains on my side. OK, whereabouts in your side? Right, there it is. Where my finger is. I had it last night. OK. I didn't get no sleep, and the pain Thank is getting you. worse and worse and worse. I wanted some tablets. Look, I'm getting pain right near my neck, it's all the way down. It's a microphone. So I don't know where, it's all on one side, it's this side. So it's from your neck, neck down, but it down, feels yeah. like it starts in your... Yeah, from, yeah, my neck. It started from my neck first. One of my colleagues will... I'm um, coming in just a minute. I just want to do a quick scan of your heart. It's nothing to worry about, it's something we do on the majority yeah. of people. Um, but at that point, just a good opportunity to get you, take your kids down to the paediatrics yeah. department. One of my colleagues will show you the way. You can get some toys or something to uh, keep yeah. them occupied. Right. Um, but we'll just, uh, and then I'll do the scan whilst they're down there. Oh, um, okay. What? The scan, I don't like scan. It's just going for a little while. I eat it. That used to look like going for a black tunnel. Don't. I don't like scans. Leave things alone. With a scan, they tell you to throw it away. That's the problem. So they might think it's serious. Oh, love. Might be anything. Fucking hope not. Hello. Again. Come here. Um, this is Hilary. Um, she's going to just take you guys down to find some... Uh, Toys and things. You two, go on. And then... No, no, you can't come with me. No, you can't come with me. You're daddy. Just, I'm waiting. Just for a few minutes. Only for a few minutes. I'll be back. I won't take long. 
No, you can't. Come back. Well, I'll be, I'll be all right. Go on. Oh, I'll be here when you come back. Daddy, will come. Yeah, Daddy, come. I'll be back in a minute. Go on, go quick. Come on. I'll be back in a minute. Daddy, will come. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah, he's coming. Go. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, don't cry. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. Daddy, will be back. I won't be long. Sorry about that. Okay, I just need to do a quick scan of your heart. Yeah. Um, so if I can just get you to pop your t-shirt off underneath there. Yeah. I'll keep you as covered up as I can, but unfortunately, I do need to expose you slightly. Let's keep you as covered up as we can. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a 54-year-old guy, and... Uh, when I listen to you speaking about yourself, I just think, my God, what is that woman up to? You should not have so many problems with such a young, when you're such a young girl. That's my opinion. 54-year-old Robert was found drunk in the street with a hand injury. It's his fifth visit to A&E this year. Yes, thank you. What is it that you're drinking? Is it alcohol? What? Is it alcohol? Yes, of course it's alcohol. Yeah, you're not allowed to take alcohol. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I I'll, I'll put it away. Sorry. Hmm? No, you have to bring it outside. I have to drink it outside. Yeah. Can you take it out, please? It out, bring it in. Yes, yes, of finish course. Of yes, yes, of course I can I can finish it outside, no problem. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I didn't realize it was such a scary offense. Yeah, it's a security offense, you can't drink alcohol anymore. My name is Robert. I'm fifty-four years old. I came originally to do a postgraduate law degree uh, in international law topics, uh, and I stayed because on the 5th of March 1985-4, I met my beautiful wife. I, I became an alcoholic because I was spending a lot of time away from my family. And I drank because I wanted oblivion. I spent much of 2010 uh, very angry and saying to myself, poor me, poor me, pour me another drink. That's me. No, no, it hurt my finger. I think what we need to do with you before we look at your hands, Robert, is get you into a cubicle and give you some fluids. All right. Yes. Because I think you're a little bit too drunk for us to assess properly at the moment. But all right. I don't really know. Never mind, just leave it to us. I'm going to try and find a space for you, OK? And then we'll sort out your hand. Do you, do you know what? I think you're the most wonderful woman that I have ever met in my life. A lot of people say that, Robert. Thank you. All right, the doc hopefully won't be too much too long. Um, I have I have a look and see roughly how long the wait right. is for you. <laughs> Leave it. That's all my clothes. I'll put the back in on. It's not no ball. <laughs> what? Oh, for fuck's sake! Was in here when you took it off? Yeah. When you took your t-shirt off? Yeah. You shouldn't be in here. I'm gonna end up hitting him. What? <coughs> I will. I end up hitting him. Why, the doctor? It don't matter, you shouldn't be in here. 
<laughs> exactly <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't mind. Give me my duck though, anyway, mate. Yeah, I'll be kicking his head in. There we go. Oh, I'll just go and dip that urine for you. I've got one of my. Oh, shit. Ow! Mm -hmm. Don't like that, Craig. <laughs> Susan, yeah. Susan, I'm Amanda, one of the technicians. Has anyone taken a blood sample yet? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he done it. What doctor saw Um. No, it was no. that geezer who's there. Um, Just walked out of here. I'm a blue suit on. Yeah. Blue suit on. The idiot, man. Oh, that idiot, Matt. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> the idiot. Oh, I want more. I want my kicking his head in. What is your problem? Don't like him. Because you don't like him. I like I him. Don't like him. <laughs> don't like him. <laughs> don't like him. Don't like him. It don't mean like that, Susan. It don't, don't mean like that. Uh, but he's touching you. Yeah, he's I a doctor. Like I don't care, shit. He's a doctor. Shut up. Oh, one there. Oh, that's a one. Susan is suffering from an undiagnosed pain in her neck. Dan, can you pull the cane, please? And can you stop what you're doing, please? Don't touch the computer. Leave it. I don't want to do it. No. Next time, you're not coming up here, Daniel. No, no, Leave the computer. You're getting really Daniel. bad now. Oh, Leave the computer. Hello. My name's Malcolm. I'm one of the A&E right. doctors. How do you yep, do? Yep, yep. All right. Pleased nice to meet you. Wait. All right, we've got to go in order here. Hello, sir. Young ones. Daniel, yeah. Good stuff. Can you describe the pain for me? Is it like a static pain or pressing pain? Maybe a burning? Do you like having a baby? No, 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 no. Or worse? Worse. Worse, worse. It's worse, yeah. that. Wow. It is okay. worse. Tell you. We gave you some painkillers earlier. They helped yeah. at all? No. No? No. Nope. Listen to my chest. Are you able to sit forward for me, do you think? That's gross. Any change in your weight recently? No. Wait. I think she's put on a little Yeah, bit. I put on a lot, yeah. Do you smoke her? Sometimes. Not a lot. Alcohol? No. no. Are you working at the moment? No. Looking after the kids? Yeah. yeah. Full-time job, isn't it? Yeah. They're a school at the moment. OK, good. Can you think of anything you've done differently in the last few days? You've done any lifting? No. Picked anything up? No. She just sits on the sofa mm -hmm. watching TV with the yeah, kids. But no, no, no change from normal there? Uh, that would be what you'd normally do? Yeah. Um, I think this is going to be a muscular pain. Certainly up in the neck there. Yeah. And where you tend to here, we can press just over where the ribs are. Yeah. There's a lot of muscles, three sets of muscles, attaching all these ribs, and all these can get inflamed. Yeah. Obviously, you've had some codigamol already. It's a pretty good painkiller. Yeah. What we could do on top of that is give you an anti-inflammatory. Yeah. So, in the light carb we give you something called diclofenac, which is it's kind of a little yeah. bit more, more punch to it. Yeah. All right? All right. Good stuff. Thank you. Any all questions right. at all? Um, yep. Thank you. All right. What's all your right. question, young Where's man? Where's the pen? Where's, Where's the, the pen? pen? <laughs> my pen's here, because I've lost my top and I can't put it in my pocket. Oh, yeah. That's all right. I'll see you later. Thank you. <laughs> I'm starving. So am I starving? I am too. 45 minutes, you're gonna give me some more medicine, you're 45 time, you're gonna come back, then I'm gonna go on. Huh? I'm gonna like, pop out of the fish and chips. Or McDonald's. Yeah, Dad, give me McDonald's. I want McDonald's. After an hour on a drip, Robert is sober enough to be examined. Hello? Sir? What? Have you been in hospital recently? Yes. Which one? Lewisham. Lewisham, with what problem? I'm drunk and alcoholic asshole. Did you fall over then? Yes. Did you bang your head? You got some scars on your head then? Yes, I have, I have several scars okay. on my head. I was in five different a &E's over the course of 2010. I was really uh, in a bad way, very underweight, and having seizures in the street in Lewisham 
falling flat on my face and waking up in a hospital bed, and King's was one of them. I did it about 10 times. How are you feeling now? <sighs> to be honest, fuck. Do you remember me? Yes. OK. Do you remember how you got here? I know that I was brought here by ambulance. I don't know how I actually physically got here. What happened to your hand? This one. Which one? This one. This is all very swollen. Ah, uh, I think I, I punched somebody. Okay. Is it painful? Only when it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Only when it hurts. But, the other guy. Okay. Can you make a fist? Okay, and does the thumb move up and down? This uh, one on its own? Yes. I was always a loner. And like a lot of addicts, I thought that um, that was just me and I was just different. I've lost many hundreds of thousands of pounds. I've lost the love of my wife and my children. Didn't you put your shoes on? Uh, I couldn't be bothered. OK. Um, your hand's fine. You've got no fracture there. Mm -hmm. you, do you want to go? Do I want to go? Are you ready to go home? I don't have a home. It's a flop house. Yeah, I don't have a home. The, the bed in the hospital is actually the nicest bed I've been in for a long time. I'm sorry, but um, that's the state of Robert. Thank you, dear. Of course, it's a, a wonderful thing to wake up in a nice, clean bed and uh, have a um, person there to take care of you. It's fantastic. If you sleep rough, or in hostels which don't have any heating, actual physical warmth is extremely nice, but also personal warmth uh, of the staff, people who care about you. I did tend to think rather paranoically that people were often kind to me because they wanted something from me. And uh, here in emergency, that's clearly not the case. They just want you to get better. Kind of arrest. So we know CPR is, is in progress and full protocol. I had these dreams and hopes that I was going to leave at ten o'clock tonight. Ten, no, it had just gone it gone a bit tits okay. up at ten. Nine fifty nine? Nine fifty nine. A patient has been brought in by ambulance after suffering a heart attack. Okay, we can see CPR please. Okay. No, thank you. Had one shocking manual moment. Oh, eight adrenalines. Um, she must have been down at least six minutes before we got there. Would you do a rhythm check, please? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree. Got a pulse. Really? Okay, okay, nice. She had eight milligrams of adrenaline in total. She had nothing with us. She had an output on arrival here, but she did have an episode of VT. Yeah, but with pulse still. I suspect as the adrenaline wears off, it's all going to wear off. That's why I just want to have a chat to the family now before we um, get to that point. Where's Malcolm? No output. No output. Start. Restart CPR. Will be I think there are days when what happens will bring tears to your eyes. You're faced with people who are having life-changing or life-ending events every day and on some level it must make you appreciate what you've got, what you're capable of doing. And so, you know, I think you're mad if you don't take the opportunities that are presented to you to enjoy life while you've got it because Unfortunately, one day you can be crossing the road and it can all be over. I think the adrenaline. I think it's adrenaline. It's, yes, an adrenaline dependent adrenaline. rhythm, isn't it? Hey? I think it's just like yeah, exactly. So the adrenaline yeah. wears off. And she's got a pH of 6.9, it's not going to be salvageable. No, so we'll just press on until you come back. had instances where I will go and get the family and essentially it's the point at which you've realised it is futile and there's, you know, it's a non-recoverable situation. And then the family gets to be there when she, I guess, officially passes away and the heart stops, and that can be quite comforting for people. The majority of patients who have heart attacks away from hospital do not survive. It is very emotionally draining to have to break that kind of news to people and to be witness to that last moment that loved ones have together. How was the son? Oh, good. Um, he was uh, emotional. And talking to the family is the hard bit and getting them on board. Yeah, I, I, so I don't mind bringing bad news actually. Because I think if, uh, if it goes okay, it's, it's good in the end of the day. It has to be done. And we've all seen people who do it badly, and I think, I don't know, I don't think I'm a world leader at breaking bad news, but I think I'm definitely in the fair to middling ground and I've seen some people who were shocking at it, so I think I'm better than that. In some ways, that's harder for the family, I think, if they get something back to think, oh, bless, poor thing. It's not how he thought his thought was going to go. No. Mind you, I'm quite happy with the idea of, you know, just going like that. If people are jumping up and down my chest when I'm dead, yeah. not bothered. As long I, said, as... I explained to I said it was very quick, whatever it was. As long as there's nothing heroic done to bring me back to some vegetative state. Car Dr. Teresa to see any patients. Oh, God. OK. All right, well, thank you, Malcolm. I'm sorry you had to stay so long. No, no, thank you very much. I'm more than, more than happy to stay, <laughs> as you know. Talks are Have coming it. your <laughs> way. I'm coming back tomorrow, you know. I'll go and see what that patient is. Strachey's 
speaking. Two stabber into the legs, small one on the left, big one on the right. I witness more violence here than I do in Jamaica. No trouble in here, do you hear me? It's a hospital. It is a dangerous environment. It is. What do you think? Doing up a... Listen to me! All right, it's a hospital for Christ's sake. You don't have to watch the television to see what's going on in Britain. Right here at King's, it takes place right before your eyes. <laughs> 